The Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations, Gary Anandasangari, joins me now here in studio. Minister Ananda Sangri, thanks so much for joining us here today uh, in the city to make an announcement about the red dress alert. Uh, can you give us a, a bit more on the announcement and how you think it will help with the ongoing crisis of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls? Well, well thank you and I'm glad to be here. Um, the red dress alert is, uh, is an idea that uh, many um, who are working the front lines, many survivors and their families have been asking for. We know that within the first few hours of uh, someone going missing, particularly indigenous women, girl or um, two-spirited individual, um, we know that within the first few hours it's easier to find that person if the community knows about it. So red dress alert essentially alerts the community about a missing person. Uh, specific in this case to indigenous uh, women uh, and, and to us uh, LGBTQI plus peoples. And what will happen is that once the alert goes out, um, the, the community will be able to uh, inform um, law enforcement or other uh, systems of this person's uh, um, presence and, and, and where they are and uh, how they can be reached. So this is really a way of saving lives and ensuring uh, that uh, those who may go missing are found and are returned home safely. Uh, Minister, of course, we don't get you in studio too often, so I wanted to ask a couple of other questions. Uh, one being about Bill C-53, uh, the controversial bill that's meant for the recognition of certain Métis governments in Alberta, Ontario, and Saskatchewan. Saska Saskatchewan recently withdrew the Métis Nation Saskatchewan. A judge had recently ruled that proper consultation didn't happen in Alberta, and there's been widespread condemnation amongst First Nations across the country over the inclusion of the Métis Nation of Ontario. Is this bill dead? We're uh, speaking to partners. Um, there are a number of different considerations. Uh, we are engaging them on what the next steps ought to be. Um, but I think what's important to recognize is that <coughs> as a government, we are uh, committed to ensuring uh, that uh, we move towards a path of self-determination, uh, one that is um, really grounded on, on Section 35 of the Constitution. Uh, so we look forward uh, to the ongoing conversations to see uh, what the next steps are. Do you think uh, Bill C-53 will pass? Well, at, at this point, I think we're, we're um, considering uh, the options and we're engaging with partners to see uh, how they would like to proceed. Um, and uh, we will uh, be able to communicate further on this uh, in, in several weeks. Uh, the recently announced budget, uh, of course, as you know, made no mention of, of reconciliation. Uh, do you think there was a, a reason for that or an oversight? There was, in fact, a full chapter on reconciliation. Um, and uh, uh, if you look at uh, the way the budget rolled out this year, it's very unique and very different than past years. There are a number of uh, different announcements that took place uh, before and after the, the formal release of the budget uh, itself. Uh, and there have been a number of key uh, areas where uh, Indigenous people are front and center, including the loan guarantee program with $5 billion uh, to ensure that Indigenous uh, communities and nations are able to undertake uh, business ventures. Um, there is support for, for example, the Red Dress Alert. We have um, additional uh, supports, for example, on the establishment of a modern treaty commissioner, which we announced formally yesterday. Uh, so we have uh, staggered uh, these announcements, but let's be very clear. The budget itself has a significant portion uh, of it dedicated to Indigenous peoples. Uh, finally here, Minister uh, Nunavut Tungavik, Inc. has called for an inquiry into Canada's handling of the Johannes Revoir case. Is that something that's being considered? Um, I, look, the, the Revoir uh, case is something that has triggered uh, many, many uh, people, many communities. Uh, it is just absolutely devastating uh, what happened. Um, Canada tried every step of the way to ensure that justice is served, accountability um, is, is reached. Um, I've, sp I've spoken to a number of survivors uh, who were at, at the school when uh, Rivar was there, uh, and they're deeply disappointed. But they're also relieved that he's no longer alive. Um, I do believe that, uh, you know, if warranted, um, th there should be further review of, uh, of
of the actions of, of, of everyone involved in this. Uh, but I am relieved today that Revoir can no longer um, impact um, and, and hurt um, young people. Um, but the scars that, that, uh, that he left is, is going to last and, and we need to find a way to support and to heal um, and to ensure that this never happens again. Minister Hernandez-Angry, we'll have to leave it there. Do appreciate you taking some time for us in studio today. Thank you.